The year 2020 is a pivotal year for advancing gender equality worldwide as a global community takes stock of progress made for women's rights since the adoption of the Beijing PFA. The emerging global consensus is that despite some progress, real change has been agonizingly slow for majority of women and girls in the world. In the Global Gender Gap Index, GGI, of the 2018 report, Nigeria is ranked 133 of the 149 countries when using index designed to measure gender equality. Today, not a single country can claim to have achieved gender equality. However, Nigeria's core card in terms of the delivery of the commitments contained in the Beijing Declaration and Platform for Action is varied. Highlights of achievements that are specific to the past five years include the adoption of a social protection budget as part of the federal budgetary framework, the passage of the Violence Against Persons Prohibition Act, and vocational education, amongst others. Available country data shows that there are some clear indicators of alignment with targets in the Beijing Platform 12 areas of concerns. All right, so Chinwe, from an economist's point of view, mm -hmm. uh, what have you seen playing out regarding uh, women empowerment? Yeah, like, so I always say this, that a bird has two wings as opposed to one wing and will be unable to fly with that just one, one wing, wing, right? And um, the same logic should be applied to any economy that has each gender representing at least half of its population, half of, yeah, to its population. So women, 49.5%, with some statistics, I like to approximate it to 50%, so 50-50. To achieve sustainable economic growth, we need to empower not just the men, but also the women. Now, if you look at the national accounts for Nigeria, and that's the GDP structure, you would see that um, agriculture accounts for over 20% of national output. The contribution of women to the agricultural labor force ranges between 40 to 60%. But then when you look at the agricultural value chains, you would see that there are disparities when it comes to access to formal finance for women. Now, the median capital that's available to a woman's male counterpart is two times. Mm. Two times. And it really, it really boils down to the fact that when we talk about things like collateral, or you look at their credit history, there's really nothing to link to these women. Why? Mostly because of tradition. Mm -hmm. So the lack of ownership of collateral, we, when we look, when we, when we drill down, it's linked to um, tradition. tradition. And so there's been a huge gap when it comes to access to formal finance for women. But then you have institutions like the CBN, you have the Bank of Industry that have put out special financial interventions for sectors, for SMEs, for uh, farmers. But what you'd see there is that they're also being intentional with uh, bridging, bridging the gender gap yeah. when they're giving out these um, uh, special loans for, to business owners. So um, from an economic perspective, of course a whole lot can be done. From an economic perspective, having 50% of your economy unable to do anything is not a positive it's or beneficial, exactly. So um, there's still a lot that can be done. The efforts that the CBN has made, bravo, efforts from the BOI, bravo, but the, when you look at the impact holistically on the economy, it's so, it's so minimal. So there's still so much that could be done. I mean, and, and you know, when it comes to impacts, that's what people want to see. That is what affects the laborer mm -hmm. that's in the farm. That's what affects the market woman that's, mm -hmm. you know, trying to make sales at mm -hmm. the end of the day. So, Pemi, what's your take on this particular issue? I mean, if, if I want to buttress uh, what she said, I think what we have going on is like uh, five steps forward, ten, ten steps back, because all of the interventions that are taking place, we have a population explosion mm. that is that is watering down all of the effort so it's like you know you're trying so hard but the challenges are you know and the people who are i mean how much is the facility compared to the problem i mean if you sure. look at uh the two to, well the disputed and controversial uh, 2018 world bank statistics that you know made nigeria the poverty capital of the world you know i know a lot of people have disputed it and all that but the fact still remains that the facts don't lie if, uh, if I'm, I'm sure it's the same uh, metrics that were used across the world. And what I see about that statistics was about almost 86 million, over 86 million of our population are under that poverty threshold. Index. That's 50% mm -hmm. of, over 50% of Nigeria's population. And of that 50%, 70% of that 50% is women. 
So that goes to show that, you know, it's like uh, a drop in the ocean. So much needs to be done, you know. So, and, it, and I think that it's important that uh, we put that into context. Like, you know, so when we're talking about things about what has been done or the various interventions that, you know, we need to take into cognizance the magnitude of the problem that we're facing. Mm -hmm. You know, so it moves beyond the idea of perhaps window dressing or trying so hard to, you know, see what we can do to make sure that we're doing something. So really looking, look, what, what we want here, what I think is the solution is something transformative. The system has to be overhauled. I mean, mm -hmm. even the sector itself, mm -hmm. over 70% of Nigeria's economy is informal. Mm -hmm. You know, how I many of them are even yes. captured within that formal yeah, economic exactly. bracket. So what, what is being done in terms of making sure that we're bringing all of this women? Because you cannot even get facility if you're not in the bracket. Of course. You know, so of she's course. speaking to some of the issues she, she highlighted. Mm -hmm. We still have a land use act in Nigeria. We have uh, st cultures that still have issues as regards inheritance of a woman mm -hmm. in cases of divorce. These are serious issues we still need to really look at in terms of you know, putting out policy frame, aside from even policy, implementation. Yes. Sometimes, you know, if you look at Nigeria, Nigeria is beautiful in the books. Sometimes, you know, <laughs> you know, when you look at the existing policies, mm -hmm. aside from that, we need more. But the policies that are even existing, when you read them, and maybe you are somewhere else yeah. in one island and you're looking at it, but like, oh, this must be a very beautiful place we are going at. So there has to, we have to find a way to bridge that, mm -hmm. you know, policy to action. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I think mm -hmm. it, it just, just, it's important that we take that into cognizance. Yeah, but even from, again, a, an economic perspective, I'll pick an indicator, the unemployment rate. And um, the recent one, I, I think about over 21%, let me not give you a figure, but over 21%. Um, we complain about no jobs, but there are vacancies that cannot be filled, right? Unemployability. Skill gap. Yes, yeah, skill gaps. So there are absolutely. vacancies that cannot be filled. And I know that there have been conversations around subnationals, that state governments, and what are they doing to be competitive or find their advantage amongst um, their peers. Their yes, advantage. exactly. And um, there's something that always I, I, I would like to see happen. That's um, skills acquisition for women. I know that we have the things like bead making. I know we have basket weaving. I know we have baking, sewing, all of that. But it would be good to start seeing things like plumbing, welding, carpentry. Um, have I said painting? Did I say painting? That would even add when it comes to, you mm -hmm. know, more profit, skills. Yes. exactly. That would they'll be able to the end um, the empower their pockets, right? So um, I feel like I don't know if, if it's policies that need to be put in place, or if it's a better uh, business environment, a conducive environment that would allow them to want to get into these um, to become economically active. There, I could go on and on. I could talk about inflation and what's going on there and how pockets are about to get. Mm -hmm. Because Even for that. exactly, I know, right? because he's already exactly, <laughs> exactly. You have, you have. I have three pri three price movers. I can tell you now the VAT that went up. We have, we might see the electricity tariff go up, and then you have the um, implementation of the new minimum wage. So when m more money comes in, it also has an effect mm -hmm. on on inflation. So you know, you spoke about poverty, and it's like. We're, as you said, mm -hmm. the pockets are squeezed. So let's find That's ways true. to increase, uh, expand those pockets as opposed to... Earning potential yeah, of these people. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Earning and then spending potential. Of course, of yeah. course. Yeah. Vicho Kelly, would you like to add to this, at least in terms of you know, women in governance? Um, no, I mean, the empowerment of women, like you said, you, you said um, empowerment before politics mm -hmm. is very important. Women need to be empowered so that they can go, you know, they, they can run for office as well. But also is women need to be empowered so that they are capable to run for office as well. Of course. You know, that also helps with the competitiveness as well that we're talking about. Um, yeah, I think that's what I'll talk about. All right, so to a more, you know, relaxed, <laughs> more conversation before, mm -hmm. you know, we call this, you know, a wrap. There was something that was trending at some point on social media, wife not cook. Mm. Apparently. <laughs> I don't know why you decided to call me first to, to answer that, you know, but I mean, uh, let me first say that um, I think that there are more important issues uh, that we have on our table when it comes to um, uh, uh, women's rights or gender power dynamics. And one of the issues I want to highlight, I, I like, you know, like uh, two weeks ago, I put up a post about um, how I feel that the online space, as beautiful as it is, everybody has a voice and it's a leveler, there's no age, there's nothing, is that I feel that sometimes we get lost in the conversation in terms of what the platform can really do. You know, what's the attention span of an advocacy now? We're literally on to the next bandwagon thing now. You know, so as we speak right now in Nigeria, a Nigerian woman, all of you females sitting with me right now cannot confer citizenship on your husband if you happen to marry a foreigner. 
by a marriage. Mm. There is no country that if they don't think, if, we don't, if the country doesn't think you're equal enough to confer citizenship on your foreign spouse, they, they can't give you economic empowerment. They can't give you leadership. Why would we make you president of a country? We don't take you that seriously. At least the constitution doesn't take you that seriously. Mm -hmm. So if we have issues that are serious as that, and we're watching it down to issues around, oh, wife not cook, I think mm -hmm. there's a bit, there's a bit, uh, uh, mm -hmm. there's, there's a big, big disconnect there. Then to a lighter note, you know, really, I, I think when it comes to the, the, the gender roles between a man and a woman, you know, uh, I have a wife as well. And I think that as a modern man, at the end of the day, what works is, what, what, I, I don't think there's really any particular role, you know, it's about what works, you, you, who cooks, what which, works for your family, exactly, it doesn't exactly matter who cooks for who. In the real sense of it right now, in my dynamics, does my wife go, yeah, she cooks, but does that mean I can't cook? Was I not cooking before we got married? So those are all of the conversations we need to have. There is no definite, and it's a struggle really, because we all grew up in environments whereby we felt this is what our daddy did and our mommy yes. did. Men bring money. Now men and women are bringing money, mm. you know, so those dynamics are changing. You cannot expect a man right now, your own work, our own working hours right now is probably longer than yours. And you still want her to still be cooking morning after night. Some some people even say right now they don't eat a uh, 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 stew Soup that was made oh, that was yes. made yeah, yesterday. Yeah, yeah, of fresh. course, if I say I want to do that, I should mm. be able to afford mm. the, the the means to be able to get someone to do that. Mm, if, uh, if my wife doesn't want, and even if you have a full time wife, that, those are the things that I think those are the things that we need to start pushing for. Stay stay at home more right now. It's, it's, it's paid labor. It's labor. It is she's labor. So if you are going to work and somebody's mm -hmm. filling the void at home and all that, that is like a division of labor. You cannot mm -hmm. downplay the, that that mm -hmm. task that is being carried out. So yeah, we should care less about who's cooking for what not. But Absolutely. we all need to be fed anyway. Mm -hmm. So that's that's of my everybody take. Everybody needs food. Exactly. Food food like that. Exactly. All right. So what are your final words? Be okay. What are your final words before we call this a wrap? Um. So before that, just to speak to that. Okay. Um. I mean, so I think marriage is partnership. Mm -hmm. I think it's even wrong to have that trained mm -hmm. wife nor cook. Mm -hmm. What's that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's partnership. You shouldn't really get anyone to the kitchen or to the bedroom, you know, based on their, you know, mm. their sex. The other room. Yes, the, the, <laughs> the other room. I think it's wrong. Um, the world is evolving. More, you know, women are getting empowered. More women, we get empowered. And I think it's high time people actually just put things in perspective. You're not gonna really get women to the kitchen anymore. Women have a voice now. Mm. So I think it's it's important to dismiss that conversation when it pops up. Like you said, we could use the space better. Yeah. So usually when I see that, I don't even want to get involved in the conversation because I'm like, come on, we shouldn't be talking about this right now. But unfortunately we have a lot of educated and literate men that still talk about this. We still feel women should be in the kitchen. And I think it's a mental disorder when you think about that. Yes. All right, so um, your final words before we call this a wrap. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this has been very insightful and eye-opening. Um, what I would say is um, it will be great to see many more capable women, um, more professional women run for office come 2023. And what will be better is not just coming in 2022 or six months to election. It's starting from now. You know, get to understand power play, the dynamics, you understand, the environment. If I want to run for office in 2020, what do I need to start doing now? You need to get to know your constituency. You need to get to know your state. You need to get to know your people, grow your network, reach out to, reach out to us at the elector. Let's see how we can support you. But, you know, don't complain. Don't try to fix it when it's not broken. All right. right? Well, um, yeah, so the hashtag or the theme of the mm -hmm. month is each for equal. So I will speak from a corporate angle and I would say that if we're really trying to bridge this gap, that um, we need to be deliberate. Each person has to be deliberate with equipping themselves. So um, you need to be able to position yourself properly so that when opportunities come or open up, for you to go up or for you to be promoted or for whatever case, whatever the case may be that would allow um, for you to play your own part in bridging this gap that you're prepared. So um, I guess that, that's what I would like to say around that. Oh yes, and equipping women is smart economics. And so um, it's, this is not a bashing thing. This is not we're bashing men. This is it's beneficial for everybody. Everybody. So, so yeah, that's All right, enough. me, the only man that was on our panel today. So, so I still get a final word. Of course. <laughs> uh, I think for me, really, uh, it will be good. It will be interesting to see that uh, by this time next year, that we have the, the alteration. Because I'm aware that Honorable Akin Labi actually moved 
uh, that uh, presented that bill for the alteration of the Nigerian constitution to make sure that women, women, and foreigners can also confess it just like a male counterpart. So it will be good that by this time, next year when we're celebrating International Women's Day, that will be added to part of the landmark achievements that Nigerian women have achieved mm -hmm. moving forward. So that will be something I, I, I'll be looking forward to. And before we go once more, is there any, any, anybody in particular you'd like to celebrate? Yeah, starting from, starting from the women on this platform. <laughs> of course, if you have been a Happy International you. Women's Day. Thank you know, you. To, to all of the women in my life, uh, Happy International Women's Day. To Nigerian women across the world, you know, Happy International Women's Day. I remind you to talk about your mom as well. I know, right? That's what <laughs> <we're saying. laughs> no, so She's right, part then. of the women in my life, so of she's course, captured. Of course, but thank you so much, all of you. Thank, thank you for having me. Thank you so much. Thank you. And that's all we can take on Connect and Conversations, brought to you by the Transformative Leadership and Sustainable Development Initiative in partnership with Above Whispers Media Group.